Okay, it stopped. Stop pumping. Hello! So two major things happening in my life right now. So the first one is we bought a new flat recently and we're moving into that flat in the next two weeks. So that's exciting. A week after that, we are going to go on holiday. We're going to spend Christmas in my hometown. Yay! The problem now is we're going to go away for three full weeks and that's a long time in the plant's life. Yeah? I need to make sure that I take care of them in the same level as I've been taking care of them for the past four months and I can afford to lose them just like that because I'm going on holiday. So, there are options that I'm, I've been thinking about. So the first one is in this day and age, why not just automate things, yeah? So, I was thinking given that my lights are already automated, meaning it turns on and off on a scheduled basis. This is a quick demonstration of the TP smart plug that I'm using for my grow lights. It actually can be controlled by an app that you can download. So it's called Casa. And if you click on that, um, you see I've named my lights hydroponics and I can literally turn it on and off through my phone anywhere in the world. So that's really cool. I also scheduled it to turn on every 6 in the morning and turn off 10 in the evening. And I'll be using the same mechanism for my watering system. So I was thinking of just buying a pump and every 5 minutes during the day just let the water flow to the containers. You need to sacrifice probably some of them. Um, I don't really eat most of them. Um, so favorites and the ones that actually benefit me, I plan to move with the bottom, the bigger one, because there are slots that I don't use. So I've been watering my plants for the smaller ones every two to three days. It still varies. This one actually consumes less water than this. Then for the big one, I actually have been watering it for almost every day now. I'm just gonna quickly show you, sorry, it's a bit messy there, um, the roots of the tomato. It's been growing so big now, as you can see. It's taking the shape of the container, which is quite funny. So when I did this project, I didn't want to test it, of course, in this big one. I want to test it in the smaller one. We had an extra. Um, I'll be showing you sort of the um, project that we've been doing for the past few days, and it's been actually successful. So I'll show you that in the video. I'm just going to go through the materials that we're using for this project. So the first one is, I'm going to go over the Elvis ones. This is a 12 volt, 5 watt water pump. And we also have the 12 volt 1A power supply unit. So this is going to convert 230 volts to 12 volts. So this is screw terminal to female DC jack. So that's the formal name. What it, what it is exactly is just, it's just going to connect both the water pump and the plug together. That. We also have the TP Link smart plug. We also have these PCB breadboard. The reason why we have this is it's just to temporarily connect cables. The vertical float switch. The next one we have is an 8 millimeter tube. And we also have a 4 millimeter tube. The reason we have two is because the 8 millimeter tube fits perfectly our protocol. There you have it. However, we need another end to fit the here back to, which is this one. So there you have it. To connect the two tubes, we have this 8mm to 4mm tube reducer. I'm just going to show you the switches that we used. So we have this vertical float switch that I showed earlier, but there's another version that we tried during our test, which is a horizontal one. So how this works is once the water goes, uh, water level goes up, and it reaches a certain point, it's gonna stop and switch off the pump. However, the problem with this one is when the roots get entangled, it wouldn't really work properly. So we were thinking of another um, solution, which is might as well use the, this one. So the Kia Baxter actually comes with a water level indicator, which looks like this. It used to be in the middle, and it comes with a cover as well. So this, what, this cover here protects the water level indicator from getting entangled with the roots. So this is a, a 
vertical fold switch. We remove this over part here. But given the thread, which is this part, is too short, and we obviously want to make sure that goes to a level that's necessary because when we, we did the testing, the water level was too high already and it wasn't really switching off. So we had to lower it down so that when the water goes up and reaches this point, in, that's the time it will switch off the water pump. To be able to extend it, we bought a small PVC tube and we, I'm just gonna put it here like that just to extend it, as you can see. And what we need is we just use an instant glue and glue it here. Now, here, you'll see, this is the switch, there's an, ex an extension here. Uh, we also drill some holes in the cover because the water was really slow in going in, so it wasn't really accurate getting the water level. What you need to do is when you put the cover, you, might, you need to make sure that it faces the wall and doesn't face the plants. Otherwise, some roots might go in and again, the flow suit may get entangled and wouldn't really work. So what we need to do is just make sure it faces the wall. There you go. So this is now the demonstration of the whole setup. I just want to show you how everything ties. So I'm going to start off with the switch. As you can see here, um, we've attached it to the container. So I'm just going to lift that up and you'll be able to see it's actually covered. So I'm just going to take it off so that you see how the float switch looks like. So that's how it looks like at the bottom. And make sure that when you cover it, you, you place the holes facing the wall so it wouldn't get entangled with any roots. So you just remove that and you put that here. So the next one is um, all the float switch, the vertical float switch is now connected via, we're using a PCV breadboard. This is just a temporary connector between the two cables. So we need to connect the first cable to the pump and this one is gonna be connected to the plug. So this, I haven't attached it because I don't want to turn it on, but essentially this is the 232 12 volt plug. Now I'm gonna show you how the pump looks like. So this is the pump, as you can see, we have a bucket full of water mixed with nutrients or so fertilizer, and at the bottom we've placed the the water pump and we've connected the 8mm tube so this 8mm tube is also connected to the 4mm tube via a, a reducer and that is gonna go back to our setup which is the gear boxer you may notice we actually did some modification what we did is we sewed half of the reducer this is um, the 8mm half and this is the formula to have. What we do is we just drill a small hole and we basically place it underneath and then pop it up and then connect the, the hose so that it's firm. So there are two benefits for this one. So the first one is obviously um, when we transfer water to the container, um, there's no chance that this will push back. The second one is we don't really want to submerge the host to the water because there is a chance that it will create a backflow and we don't want that. That's the whole setup. Okay, so now that's connected, you can see the water is flowing and it's starting to fill up. Stop, yeah? Stop pumping. 
happy to say it was a success. If you like it, hit like and subscribe. See you in the next video.